I have been waiting weeks and weeks and weeks to finally make this video. Hello guys and welcome to another installment of AA Computers and Technology. The stuff that I ordered from China finally came in. This is a 20 gram syringe of thermal compound. Bought this off Amazon for $2. Uh, it's some pretty cheap stuff, but I just need something that was going to get the job done. And then after I use this, I mean, I'm going to save what's left, but whatever's on uh, the actual experiment's going to get tossed out. So yeah, I just need something that was going to be pretty disposable. I tried to shoot this video uh, without using thermal compound, and I'll talk about that in just a little bit. I have already shot this entire video, and I just had to scrap it because I didn't have the stuff that I needed, and things were just going wrong all over the place. So I'll show you a couple, uh, a couple clips from that. And then I was also waiting for this uh, newbie infrared thermometer to come in so basically you just point this at something and it will record the temperature uh, to a relatively uh, accurate reading I'm not sure how accurate it is to uh, be honest but you know it's one one of those things that's gonna get the job done once again so what we're gonna be doing today is taking this gigantic jar of pennies and I'm gonna sort out all of the ones that are composed primarily of copper. I believe uh, those were manufactured before the mid 1980s. I don't know the exact date when we actually start sorting these, uh, sorting these out. I will uh, give you guys the exact date there just for um, some historical accuracy. But let me put this down because it is gigantic. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking a bunch of the copper pennies and trying to stack them up so they cool this Pentium 4 processor. Now, I tried to do this with a Prescott in the last video that I shot. And that was like, that was crazy. I could not cool a Prescott with pennies. I mean, the thing was running at like three gigahertz. It's one of those hyper-threaded ones. Um, and it was just insane. I, the temperatures got way too high and the system just shut down. So uh, not gonna use the Prescott this time. I'm not really sure which version of the Pentium 4 this is. So I'll have to open up CPU-Z and actually uh, check it out. I am uh, putting the image of Windows 7 on a USB flash drive right now so we can use that in conjunction with this machine. So I got some more prep work to do. And of course, as expected, I did run into some kind of issue with this video. Unfortunately, Windows 7 would not install on this system configuration and my Windows XP disk is nowhere to be found. So instead, we're going to be using Exubentu 14.04, which really isn't that big of a deal. I'm gonna to have to do a little bit more planning because in the last video where I absolutely failed, I was using Windows 7 and I kind of had everything already planned out. So I'm gonna to have to do a little bit more planning uh, when it comes to what exactly I want to do on this operating system to test everything out and over here we have all 50 of the pennies manufactured on or before 1982 that we will be using and just going to give you a closer look at these look at that good old copper pennies or primarily copper at least and then here you can see that uh, pig syringe of heat sink compound that I'm using for this video. And if you want to check this out, I will put my affiliate link in the description uh, so you can go to the Amazon page. And if you uh, if you want to check out the, uh, the uh, infrared temperature gun, I will also post the link in the description. Obviously, before we go any further, some of you guys probably want a little bit more information on the setup I have right here. So let me go ahead and shoot off some system specs to you guys. For the processor, we are rocking an Intel Pentium 4 Northwood running at 2.6 gigahertz. I have a NVIDIA GeForce FX 6200 in here with 256 megabytes of dedicated VRAM. I have a gigabyte of DDR RAM in here running at 333 megahertz. I'm using a Mac store hard drive. That's where Xubuntu is installed on. Now, this is a 7 1200 RPM hard drive, uh, 320 gigabyte capacity, Dynamax 21, uh, just a sparkle power supply right here. I think uh, it's rated around 300 watts, and that's really about it. It's just a, uh, I forget what model this motherboard is, and I think the uh, the uh, iNex CPU tool right here might actually tell us. So it's an Intel motherboard, uh, board name, it's the D86 5GBF. Okay, so my last video, I had a bunch of stress tests set up and I realized now that's kind of silly. I don't want to do that because it was a challenge just getting the system to boot up into an operating system, which I was not successful at doing last time. So if I can actually get the system to boot up into Exubuntu, I might run some stress tests. I might, depending where the... Uh, the temperatures stand but right now I don't really plan on doing so and also just real quick before I go any further I know I'm gonna get that one guy that posts that one stupid comment like you know what's the point of this video um I'm a content creator I'm allowed to have fun this video is purely just for fun so sit back and enjoy and of course please do not forget to leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed it if you didn't please tell me why you did not like the video 
Now, unfortunately, it appears this board is not equipped with any temperature sensors, which is kind of annoying because the last board that I used had several sensors placed at several different points on the motherboard, so it made recording data really easy. So we're gonna have to do things the manual way. I'm gonna grab my infrared thermometer and record the section of the heatsink that is nearest to the processor. So I'm just getting uh, idle temperatures right now. The system is sitting at idle. It's not really doing anything. And I'm gonna get the temperature of the outer section of the heatsink closest to the CPU, so uh, closest to the bottom. And we're reading about 33 degrees. So let me move over here. I'm gonna take the hottest point because that's probably the uh, measurement that is going to be closest to the temperature of the actual CPU. So I have 33 so far. Move over here, peg anything hotter. No, it looks like 33 degrees is going to be our max temp. Let me move over to this side. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna stick with 33 degrees uh, for the temperature with the stock heatsink sitting at idle. All right, so here comes the fun and probably really messy part of this video because there's gonna be thermal paste all over the place. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the stock heatsink and then we're gonna see what we can build using the pennies. Now, I originally planned to just melt these down um, and try to make a uh, heat sink out of some sort of mold, but then I realized that was illegal, so we can't do that. <laughs> I would have gotten a, a lot of angry viewers and I would have been like, what, it's illegal, what? I forgot that destroying a uh, currency was something that we're not supposed to do. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take this heat sink off. Okay, so you can see the heatsink is off now. Unfortunately, when I was trying to remove it, a section of the bracket did snap in half, so I'm gonna have to grab a, another one of these out of storage. I have like a bunch of them laying around, uh, but that is kind of annoying when something breaks on you when you're trying to disassemble it. That always gets on my nerves. But you can see the CPU right here. I'm gonna leave, I know some of you are gonna freak out, but I'm gonna leave some of that thermal compound on here because this is actually pretty new. Uh, when I first brought this system home, I did a bunch of maintenance on it, including putting new thermal paste on it. And this is some pretty nice thermal paste. It's the uh, Arctic Nano Formula 7 or Antec Nano Formula 7 or something like that. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna utilize that along with this. And we're gonna see what we can build out of pennies that sort of resembles a heat sink. So let's go ahead and get started. And here you can see why thermal compound is such a vital aspect of this project. You can see due to the engraving of the penny, the entire surface area of the penny is never really going to make contact with the CPU. So in order to fill all these gaps, we need thermal compound to come in here and fill, every, fill everything up. So that way uh, the entire surface area of the penny is effectively drawing away heat from the CPU. And now that all of that is out of the way, let's go ahead and start building. All right, so here is what I have. And I went absolutely crazy with the thermal paste because it's also acting as glue holding everything together. And I wanted to make sure all of this didn't just all of a sudden, you know, come crashing down because that would have really sucked. But I went with this alternating flower petal design. I want to maximize surface area while also keeping the structure stable. And I think this does a very good job at that. This was also the most effective when I tried to uh, get this working with that Prescott processor. So I'm not gonna talk anymore. Let's go ahead, move over here and see if the system will power on. I think it might be a good idea to move the camera over to a tripod as well, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, you guys are now on the tripod. I switched up the orientation of all the stuff here a little bit, so if something does happen to burst into flames, we can catch it on camera. That'd be really cool. There we go. And now the system decided to power on. Some funny stuff going on now. Uh, not really sure if that's just the system itself or a result of putting pennies on top of the processor. But we got past the splash screen. Come on, boot into Xubuntu. And what are we getting as far as our temps are concerned, I wonder? All right, so the lowest, uh, the pennies towards the bottom of the processor are getting around 30 degrees Celsius. So that's 86 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. <clears throat> Oh man, that cold that I'm recovering from is killing me. I'm having such a hard time talking. But dang, it looks like we're actually gonna be able to boot into Xubuntu. Wow, look at that. I am I did not expect this to work. I was actually expecting this to fail uh, because I was, having, I was having some issues before this clip, but you know what? It's working, wow. 
The system has been sitting idle for approximately four minutes now. Let's go around the motherboard and start taking some temps. So I'm gonna go back here to where the pennies are. I'm gonna grab my thermometer, try to select the lowest penny, or the one closest to the CPU at least, and I mean, it's not doing too bad. 28 degrees Celsius. How about moving over here? It's a little bit higher, that one's reading 31. And it seems like the entire pile is actually pretty consistent as far as temperature goes. So that thermal paste is definitely helping out here. Um, at times, as you see as I go, aware, uh, go around, it will jump uh, a bit high. I think the max I just saw was 36 degrees. There we go, 36 degrees centigrade, which is uh, 97 degrees Fahrenheit. And what about all the way at the top? Yeah, about the same. What about in the middle down here? Yeah, pretty consistent temperature. So, about those benchmarks. Well, I'm going to try to perform some day-to-day uh, -day tasks on here. I'm just going to browse the web, maybe open up a couple applications and see how, uh, how high the temperature spikes. And then, if it's all good from there, I might run a benchmark or two. One thing that's also probably really helping with the temperatures is the fact that Xubuntu is a pretty light operating system, much lighter than Windows 7. So I probably should have gone with Xubuntu or some sort of uh, lighter weight Linux distribution from the start. Uh, I think that would have been a good idea because uh, as you can see now, it's working great. And I don't really notice a difference between the performance when we had the, uh, the stock heatsink on and the pennies on now. So I'm just going to browse the web now and perform a couple of our day-to-day tasks and we will see what the temperature is afterwards. And she is dead. I opened up a web browser, navigated to YouTube, and proceeded to navigate to my site and the system just crashed. So I took the temperature at that point. Unfortunately, the hold on my thermometer did not last that long, uh, but it was reaching around 45 degrees Celsius at its hottest point. So it was definitely getting up there. Let me go ahead and see if the system will power back on. It should. There we go. Yeah, so we're definitely not gonna be able to run any sort of benchmarks or stress tests uh, because it's just gonna be too much for the system. Uh, definitely not gonna be able to do it with that a little penny uh, heat sink right there. But we could do a couple other operations, check some other stuff out, and play around with it a little bit to see, uh, uh, you know, what we can run again before it crashes. I'm not going to open up a web browser because that seems pretty taxing as far as temperatures go, so I'm not going to do that again. But we might open up a couple other day-to-day -day applications. Whew, and I have to say it's getting pretty hot in here because the computer behind me is rendering an animation. I have this system on, and I have all the recessed lights on, so it's getting uh, pretty toasty. I'm going to drag around this uh, instance of file manager. Let's just navigate around. Let's go to the file system and click on something with a lot of files in it. So, so far, so good. The system has not crashed yet. Let's see what we are sitting at. Oh, wow. Temperatures are hitting that, uh, that kind of dangerous mark again. We're sitting at 45 degrees Celsius at the hottest point on the heat sink. Um, so it looks like it's about to crash. Let's try opening up a couple more applications and see, hey, just for fun, will this thing crash? Wow, okay, this time it seems like it's determined not to crash. We are sitting at 55 degrees Celsius at the hottest point on the CPU. So definitely getting hot, and look at all the applications I have opened. Oh my god, this thing's, uh, this thing's pushing it right now. The system still has not shut off. We are hovering around 138 degrees Fahrenheit at the hottest point. Now at this point, I believe the CPU has begun to throttle, which is really weird because last time it just shut off. So I'm pretty sure Northwood is capable of uh, throttling the clock speeds to save itself, but I'm not 100% sure. So if I'm wrong there, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, but it looks like this thing just won't shut down this time. And one final temperature check. The hottest point on the heatsink is sitting at 64 degrees Celsius, which translates to 100 and, well, approximately 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's getting pretty darn hot.
All right, so that actually turned out to be a pretty fun little experiment. I hope you guys had as much fun with that as I did. Our penny heat sink did work for the most part. Now it's not efficient enough to run a benchmark or a stress test on or anything like that. Uh, but it did allow us to actually get the system up and running and allow us to uh, use a couple day-to-day -day applications. Now, there is one thing that I'm still not really sure about, and I think you guys, uh, uh, I would really appreciate it if you guys went ahead and answered this in the comments section, is Northwood capable of throttling? Because the second time I had the system on, it seemed like it was, but the first time it just shut off for no reason, which is kind of weird. Um, so I'd really appreciate it if any of you guys would answer that in the comments section, because I'm kind of doubting myself right now. I'm pretty sure it is. All right, so that's going to be about it for this video. I have a lot of cleanup ahead of me. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up for this video if you enjoyed it. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you guys in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.